This message has been brought to you freely by Ecclesia Kingdom Movement. To support our ministry and partner with us to increase our impact across the world, reach more people and take advantage of more platforms, we encourage you to consider making a monthly gift of any amount or one-time gift towards the work of the gospel. We'd like to thank you in advance for your support and we value your partnership. been saved now for roughly almost two and a half decades. On the 25th of February 2000, I received a call into ministry by a sovereign encounter. And unlike some of you, I I know the Bible, don't get me wrong, I, I love the Bible, I read it from cover to cover. Uh, I preach it uh, I do Hebrew and Greek when the liking or the fancy takes me but I'm not what you call an intellectual Christian in the sense that I don't live my walk with God out based on dogma and doctrine are you with me? the Bible says the letter kills or the spirit gives life don't get me wrong I don't live my life outside the boundary of the doctrine but I don't live my life from a script How many women here want your husband to read a book in the morning and say, okay, chapter two says kiss your wife. Okay, honey, come. Let me do what the book says. How many women want that? You know, we understand that in a love relationship, there must be be spontaneity. Amen. There has to be, there has to be instinct. Someone say instinct. And there have to be encounters. Amen. To a married couple, sex is God's gift to make sure that a lifetime of commitment stays intimate. Does that make sense? It is, it, it, is, it, is, it is wicked to expect a committed, whatever it's a, a marriage relationship. Or fr- I mean, friends go and watch movies together, girls, right? We boys go and play football and break each other's legs, amen? I mean, th- there has to be pleasure and experience are required to solidify most relationships. Talk to me. If, if, if all that bound you to a person was a list of rules, it'd be very difficult to see that relationship out, Amen. And I have lived my life from the year 2000 from what I call experience to experience. The Bible calls it glory to glory. Someone say glory to glory. Yeah. One level, one manifestation, one release to another. Amen. And, and there are these sovereign moments in my life that God reveals himself to me in a way like he's never done before. And they become the few with which I pursue. Does that make sense? So for instance, I don't read the Bible to find out about God per se anymore. I have experienced it with God and I go back to my Bible and say, God, prove this to me. Are you with me? I have exchanges of life with him. And then I spend the next six months, three months, 12 months figuring out what I've experienced. If you don't believe me, for those of you who think I'm being a heretic, that's exactly what happened to Paul. Paul had a Damascus Road experience, amen. Then he spent three days blind trying to figure out what he encountered. Then he, then he had another experience where he went to the heavens and then spent 13 years in Arabia trying to figure it out. Are you with me, someone? And, and we have got so intellectual in the body of Christ that we have legislated out the place of spirit encounter. We've got so afraid of error and so afraid of the spirit of Jezebel. And, you know, talk to me, someone. Amen. And what the Bible says, if you ask your father for a bread, a piece of bread, Pastor Sam, he ain't going to give you a stone. Bread symbolizes spiritual essence. If you're asking for something fresh and hot out of the oven, he won't give you something dry and cold. Mm -mm. Amen. Amen. He says, if you ask him for a fish, he'll give you a snake. And then the Bible says in the same chapter in the book of Luke, I believe it is the Luke account, it says, this he spake of the spirit. This he spake of the spirit. Someone say of the spirit. So God is saying, if you ask him for an encounter with the real thing, a demon won't speak to you. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. If you seek him for an authentic encounter, mm. he won't give you a counterfeit. That's Amen. right. And this morning while I was praying, I felt a shift and God said, son, it's time to... Amen. It's time for another Amen. sovereign yeah. experience. Mm. Now, I want you to stand with me tonight. It's a night vigil. We came to pray. Amen. Amen. We do this once a month. Amen. Come on now. You know, thank God for two hour services. But once a month, we set this night apart to go hard after God. Amen. Now, I want you to pray Moses' prayer tonight. 
Because I believe that for some of you, there is an expression, an expansion, and an explosion. Someone say expression. expression. Say expansion. expansion. Say explosion. explosion. So a revelation, the expression, it's going to grow till it breaks your mold. Amen. That God wants to release to you tonight. Some of you are here because someone dragged you or because someone would have been offended if you weren't here. Some of us are walking on empty. Who knows what I'm talking about? Your spiritual tank is flashing the red light and you don't have breakdown cover. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. But you pulled up at the right service tonight. The fuel is free. I want you to cry out to God like Moses and say, Lord, more. Open your mouth and pray. Say, show me your glory. Come on now, pray. The like of which I have not known before. Something I have no point of reference for, God. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. I want to hear a sound of hunger. A sound of desperation, Lord. The Bible says, in that day, those that love the Lord spoke often one to another and a book of remembrance was opened for them I was talking to a friend of mine this week and he began to share with me experiences I thought I'd read about all the old generals of faith but he was telling me about some of the things he discovered about men like John G. Lake and Charles Finney and Smith Wigglesworth and something began to break in my spirit and I said Lord I've been a local champion I've lived in a generation that has seen so little and I have thought myself so great but show me your glory there's more more of you more of you now one more now one more I am sure, and I am sure, and I want more, and I want more, Lord, and I, and I am sure, I want more, Lord, I want more. Let me, let me give you an example. So, you know, for those of you who were here at the last threshing floor, was it the last one or the one before the last? I think it was the one before the last. The, one we, the last one we had in not never. My friend Pastor Femi came down. Now, we were talking this week, uh, and, you know, for those of you who don't know, if you're the only stranger in Israel or this is your first time, uh, this humble missionary is relocating again. Amen. For the third or fourth time in the last six years. And you know, going down to London and we're planting a a missions base or a church, if you want to call it that. And he lives in London, so I was just telling him how I was looking for a house and if he found any to let me know. And then he just stopped on the phone and he said, so his words, says, man of God, God sent you to London. I said, yes, he did. He says, then he'll find you a house. I said, amen, he better. And he said, it'll be for you just like it was for John G. Lake. So I said, explain, because I've read about John G. Lake, but I don't know the story about the house. And, and he said, first of all, listen, listen, listen. He said, first of all, take, take the drums on a little bit. He said, this, he, said, he said, he was told to move to South Africa. And he was taking a team of nine, including some children, or eight, sorry, including some children. He said, they didn't have any money to pay for a fare but God told him to get on the ship so he took all seven of them his wife, three or four children and two or three other adults and stood in line and he said Lord my time is almost coming I'm going to look like an idiot 
Now this was about 100 years ago or so, they needed about $250. If you knew anything about money, that was about the equivalent of about a 4,000, 3,000 now. So they kept standing in line and then he said, or the book said that after about 20 minutes, the man who was second in line, just before it was about his turn, turned around, came to him, says, God says I should give you my fare and some extra. How much? $250 exactly. Put in his hand. Someone says, we're like, Lord have mercy. I wish that, some of you are looking around saying, neighbor, hear God. Now it gets deeper. So he gets on the boat or on the ship and they have a few stops and then they get to halfway and then one of the people who was with them, one of the adults says, God said I should go back home. I know I agreed to be part of this journey, but I'm hearing God say, I should, maybe I can join you later, but I'm hearing God say not to finish this trip with you. But I need $10 to go back, get off the ship and go back. So God tells him, let him go. And then 30 minutes later, a man knocks on his cabin door. He says, God says I should give the person in this cabin door $10. I don't know why. There you go. So he takes the ten dollars, stick, stick with me, and gives it to the guy, and he goes back home. Now they don't know where they're going to live. Amen. How many of you want to marry a preacher? It's not all glamour and glitz. Amen. Natalia, is your hand up? Receive it. So they, so they don't know where they're going. They, they haven't sorted it out, and he hasn't told his wife <laughs> that he hasn't sorted it out, because God told him, "I'll sort it out. Don't worry. I'm not. I'm not trying to drop a hint." Nah, I'm not trying to drop a hint, amen. And so they get down from the ship and there's a woman going through the harbor counting one, two, three, four, five, six, not you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, not you. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, not you. One, two, three, four, not you. And then she gets to them and says, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Adults, one, two, three, four. Children, one, two, three. Bear in mind there were eight when they started the journey. One left halfway. She says, sir, my name is so-and-so. God spoke to me yesterday. He said there's a missionary coming to South Africa. He's coming with four adults and three children. I have a seven-bed house. God says I am to give you my house to live. Amen. Now, let me, let, me, let me make this clear. I'm not talking about the financial miracles here. That's not my point. My point is there was a time on the earth less than a hundred years ago where normal everyday people, not just pastors, could hear God. They, they had encountered God enough to be able to hear him specifically about figures and numbers. Not the preacher now, not the preacher. The man in the line could hear God. See, do, do you know the kind of relationship you have to have to be sure God is asking you to give away the equivalent of 4,000 pounds? Even if you saw a vision, you still wouldn't give it. <laughs> to be able to receive the information and then have the submission to let it go. Yes. Oh, yeah. A seven, someone say seven. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I say, how do you say seven in Shona? Seven. Aha. Hongu. You know? What's eight? Eight. Equity. No. Seven. <laughs> to hear God clearly. And be. Pastor Sam, do you know what that means? What would the United Kingdom look like in our generation? If God had people with that level of exposure to the supernatural on a normal day. This wasn't fasting and pray. They didn't have to fast and pray. God had enough cachet with them to interrupt a normal day and give detailed seven, four adults, three children. What would Nottingham, Sheffield, London, Leicester, Derby look like? <laughs> Just imagine if everybody in this room had that level of intimacy with God. 
Let's look at the Acts of Apostles. Ananias is told by God, there is a man on a certain street, in a certain house, by a certain name. He is waiting for you. Mm. Bear in mind, Saul was less than 24 hours, or less than three days saved. So this has nothing to do with length of service. A three-day-old saved ex-murderer was told, by, and, and the Bible says, God told Ananias, said, God said, I have to, he's expecting you, and I have told him Amen. the things he must suffer. Cornelius, who is not even saved at the time, is praying. And God says, send to Joppa, to the house of Simon the Tanner. Someone say specifics. And find a man called Peter. The water levels have dropped. water levels have dropped. At the time I travel to preach and God does tiny little miracles here and there and people get excited and I get frustrated because what now is celebrated in the body of Christ used to be bog standard. We have carved ourselves an intellectual religion that satisfies our humanity and, and, and reduced it to a set of rules and regulations such that we designed to excite us. And then we judge everybody who doesn't fit into our little theological box. See, those of you who know me know that I, I, I read my Bible and I preach it more than you all, as Paul said. Amen. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a non-worded, in quote, prophet. But... But my Bible tells me that before God spoke in creation, the Spirit of God covered the waters. What came first? The Spirit. Are you with me? The Spirit came first and then the Word came to bring expression to what the Spirit was pregnant with. In those days, you had an experience with God and then we spent time explaining to you your experience. Now we spend time explaining God to people and hope that somewhere along the line they'll have an experience. Amen. <laughs> so we have to argue with tracts on the street because we are trying to tell a blind man what the sun looks like. Mm. Mercy, Lord. So the Bible says the things of the spirit are foolishness to a carnal mind. Yeah. We're trying to explain to a blind man what a son or the son, born blind, what the son looks like. I want us to pray. I want you to say, Lord, reveal your glory to me. Pray. Say, God, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself. Say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. I want to know you. <laughs> I realize I know, know you like I should. This is the new covenant. In the old covenant, men like Ezekiel and, and Isaiah had ah karia batalamande. How much more? How much more, Lord? And and don't let the devil tell you you don't qualify. See, you you don't need to be holy to experience God. It is the experience of God that makes you holy. You can't do it by yourself. It is the experience of God that gives you the grace to live a life that pleases Him. Say, Lord, I'm tired of seeking you for a breakthrough. I want to seek you for you. Because you are the God of the breakthrough. I'm not just seeking you for a healing. I'm seeking you for a release of your glory. With it will come the power not just to be healed but to be a healer. This is what true revival is. 
not jumping and dancing on a pulpit but men and women encountering God for themselves if conferences help great if prayer meetings help wonderful but revival isn't what happens at the meeting it's what takes place in the life I want to be naturally supernatural I want to live in the overflow don't hide your face from me say Lord don't hide your face from me hide not your face from me reveal 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 more 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 love more love more 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 Shindiri bobo bobo Santa la baba bante Sentere le bobo bobo Santa na na ye Santa na 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 ye te Santa na 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 Santa na 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 Zin an an or an ish an 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 Ish an an osh an an Ish na na Ish no 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 nish na na Ni 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 Interrupt my world Interrupt my existence Interrupt the monotony of my world oh god break out let there be light in the midst of the darkness arrest me oh god arrest me oh god like paul says i want to apprehend that for which i was apprehended I want to see your glory, God. Your glory, God. Now I want to see your glory, Lord. Because I want to see your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. This message has been brought to you freely by Ecclesia Kingdom Movement. To support our ministry and partner with us to increase our impact across the world, reach more people and take advantage of more platforms, we encourage you to consider making a monthly gift of any amount or one-time gift towards the work of the gospel. We'd like to thank you in advance for your support and we value your partnership.